Now that you have a basic map for your Frog Hop level, you probably have a lot of questions about how to do certain things. In this video, I'll talk about properties, which are how you configure and fine tune your level and the objects in it. Now, the first thing to note is the map properties. These will show in the middle pane here the first time that you open a map. But if you have something else selected, you'll need to go to the top and go to Map and then Map Properties to bring it back up. First up, there's World Number. This controls the atmospheric background in a level, as well as the gem color. You'll want to pick the same world that is associated with whatever tile set you're using, or it could look strange. You can see that by changing the world number to 3, I get the snowy mountaintop background. On a related note, there's alternate environment. World 3 actually has two biomes, desert and snow. Checking the alternate environment will give you the desert background instead. It also serves another purpose. In worlds 1 and 2, it will disable the background. This is useful for interior maps where the background is not meant to be visible. World 4 doesn't have a background because it's fully interior in Frog Hop. One more trick about the background is the environment offset Y. This lets you adjust the position of the background, which is useful if your level has an extra thick floor or something of that sort. You adjust this by a certain number of pixels, but each grid space is 9 by 9 pixels, so you'll usually want this to be a multiple of 9. Use negative numbers to move it up, and positive numbers to move it down. You can add custom music to your level with a music property, or use one of the songs from the Frog Hop soundtrack if you have it. This only works with OGGs. There are a lot of online converters if you need to convert an MP3 to an OGG for this purpose. You'll want to place the song inside the level editor folder structure if you want to be able to send this level to other players. The jumpy checkbox lets you change the character that the level is played with to jumpy instead of hoppy. As the name suggests, the charm property lets you assign a charm, which will be enforced when playing the level. Since custom levels exist outside of the normal game progression, you can use any charm that you wish. Take this as an opportunity to create unique challenges which require utilizing a specific charm for completion. The charm IDs are listed in a readme file, since Tile doesn't have a way to provide a drop-down selection for properties like this. These version properties are here for backwards compatibility, and they'll auto-update whenever you save the map, so you don't need to worry about them. Also, we'll talk about the first map property in the next video when we talk about worlds. And that pretty much covers it for the map properties. So now, let's talk about object properties. Selecting an object from the tile sets pane will pop up properties for that tile on the left. When you place the object in the level, it will inherit any of these properties, and you can customize their values on individual instances in the level. Every object has an object name property, which allows the game to recognize what type of object it is, and it should spawn it. You can just ignore this. You don't have to change that. The butterfly has a max difficulty and a min difficulty as do most of the other objects. Zero refers to easy, with one being normal and two being hardcore difficulty. This way you can control the range of difficulties that the object spawns in. 
some ideas on how to use this is to create extra hearts on easy, or maybe you want more enemies on hardcore. If we click on some of the objects that are already in the level, you can see their inherited properties. These gems have an X origin and a Y origin. You shouldn't ever need to modify these particular properties. Let's look at some enemies now. Some of these enemies have a standstill property. You can see that in their inherited properties here. As the name suggests, if we place one of these in the level and check this box, it will cause the enemy to stand still. Lastly, let's check out the obstacles tileset. Some of the springs, spikes, and boosters in here have a can rotate property. This is just informative and doesn't need to be changed. If an object has this property, that means you can rotate it using the built-in rotate feature inside tiled. If you try to rotate something that doesn't have this property, it won't reflect the rotation you used in game due to certain limitations. And this covers it for the most common kinds of properties, although there are a few more that will be covered in an upcoming video about switches and more advanced properties. But before that, the next video will explain how to create worlds, which is the final step necessary to create a fully functional level.